Good evening, Nick. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm I'm making it. Basically, the huh. entire family is uh, down with varying degrees of the flu. So uh, you're getting me playing uh, playing injured this evening. And we'll see you know, I might be coming down with something myself. My uh, my son, he's got something, and I think I might have it too. So I think it's all over the planet at this point. Um, so I'm going to be popping cough drops with some regularity. Uh, I know that takes away from my um, uh, the visual advantage. The other elephant in the room that I kind of want to uh, to ask people to excuse is the flag bandana. Um, <laughs> I had a bout of shingles back in September, Woo! and I got a couple of gnarly scars. And normally they're not very visible, but I guess it's the way that the light from my webcam works. It lights them up like Christmas trees. You know? uh -huh. Nobody wants to, to look at that, so I'm doing the Hulk Hogan, Mr. America thing. I'll try to get some more professional headwear for future debates. Yeah, I don't think this is really uh, necessarily a, a very um, serious you know, dress code kind of situation. I think our words can, uh, can speak for uh, ourselves. So that's cool. Great. Nice to meet you, man. Isn't the uh, internet great? <laughs> well, um, I think that's what, yeah. one of the things we're arguing about this evening. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're discussing. Uh, we're sharing our opinions. Uh, we're getting to know each other. It's all all good stuff. Um, and I think we're going to talk more about specifically social media, not just the internet in general. Um, and I think that's going to be interesting because I think there's there's just so, I mean there's so much to talk about. I was trying to think of all the possible elements of of this discussion that we can you know really bring in uh, everything from education to dating to uh, social interaction to making friends to politics it's it's huge so uh anyway that's kind of where i'm gonna go that's what i plan on talking about uh do you want to chime in I, I don't really know the format so much here so we can kind of just sort of pass it back and forth and give each other a chance to you know kind of say their opening remarks um what i was going to see if you were amenable to would be five minute opening statements and then 10 minutes of free for all for each round sure we got 20 so yeah it's kind of five and five right that's five, five, and ten, so total of twenty. Okay, yeah, sure. All right, cool. So uh, I'll do my opening statement, huh? All right. Um, which uh, we've been chatting for three minutes, so uh, <laughs> um, I'll keep it. Let's keep it maybe down to three and a half or so, um, and we'll consider this little back and forth uh, between you and me as a kind of uh, illustration of some of the good elements of uh, social media. Um, I was able to find you. Uh, have a conversation with you. I have no idea where you live um, and have a conversation about this very subject. And we could talk about pretty much anything. And you're going to be able to exchange information with me. You'll learn from me. You'll get to know me. Uh, you'll understand a little bit more personally about who I am. And uh, after that, you know, I'm going to grow and learn from it. And so will you. So I think that's really one of the most powerful elements of social media. Uh, it's not just the way in which we ultimately interact, but in how we get to connect with each other. And those connections are incredible. Um, you know, the, uh, and, it, and it's uh, kind of viral, right? I mean, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't on Facebook in some debate group uh, where Max Mills calls me in and says, hey, there's this thing we're starting, this call out, and you can debate with people online, and, and then I end up here. Um, so I think that's great. And I think that um, in terms of all the other benefits that I found in social media, which I, I think I'm fairly obsessed with, um, for one, I've, I work in education. So I've seen incredible amounts of benefits uh, there, the, the way that people have grown. Um, you know, students, you know, have statistically 50% of students claim that they use the internet to figure out answers for their school questions. Um, people are generally able to find whatever resources they want on the internet just by using social media. Because a lot of times it's nice to Google, but I find it's a lot more helpful if you can kind of use the lazy web, get on Facebook and say, hey, uh, I don't know, uh, you know anybody who can tell me a little bit about like real estate and how I can find a deal on a loan or whatever. And the power of that, just the, the collaborative filtering uh, that goes into understanding how you can you know, find the information you need is powerful and incredible. Um, Another element, of course, is politics. I think politics have have expanded uh, awareness about everything that's going on, and it allows us to um, very strongly uh, get our heads around the complexity of 
everything that's out there. There's so much I didn't know 10 years ago um, before I got into Facebook um, about how the world works, how politics work, how every little element of it is available. So, I, you know, I think that's I think that's really, really important. Um, and the last thing I think that's another powerful element that I want to bring in and I'll talk more about it um, is uh, just getting to know our relationships with people not just about uh, feeding my information and my understanding of the world, but actually feeling connected. Um, and that's beautiful because you can get to know people you might have never met. You end up, might end up marrying them. Uh, you might end up becoming best friends with them. You may start a business with them. Uh, and, and that's incredibly powerful. Uh, the other element that I, I think I'll bring up and then I'm gonna pass it back to you um, is to talk about business and marketing. Uh, it's incredible what, you can do uh, using, um, you know, all the power of Facebook uh, or Google Analytics or all these other ways in which you can sort of virally and with, through marketing, uh, you can bring in and you can find just the right target audience. So if you know somebody who's really into sweaters for ferrets on Etsy, you can find that person and you can sell your your ferret sweaters, and it's huge. So um, so yeah, so those are really the the key elements, I think. Uh, uh, politics, education, relationships, and business. So I'll leave it at that. All right. Well, um, point of housekeeping, I thought this first round you were going to be agreeing with the prospect that social media has a negative impact on humans. Oh, I did, I did backwards. I was, I was supposed to do the positive. I think they said, but it's the positive of the negative. So do you mind if we reverse it? Am I going to throw you off if you... No, nope, I can... I'll tell you what, I am chopping at the bit to take the positive on the proposition that social media has a negative net impact on humans because that gives me the burden of proof. And in this particular debate, I can meet that burden of proof with, with one word, Trump. You say uh, social media has expanded our politics. Yeah, it's expanded it into the abyss. It's expanded it into the black hole of human irrationality. And here's the thing. when <clears throat> when you take the in-person aspect of human interaction away, uh, what happens with most people is that the part of their community that goes away is their higher reasoning skills, their compassion, their love for their fellow human beings, and their value toward human life. So yes, it's expanded our politics by empowering people who before social media were so out there, so into the extreme, so hateful, so downright evil that they would not have had a place within our civil society. Social media has empowered those people because they no longer have to look another human being in the face as they're being completely horrible, calling for children to die because their parents are of a certain religion, saying that it's better for kids to die on a beach than to be accepted to a developed nation as refugees. They feel empowered to do that and to elect a president who espouses the same things. Uh, so basically what, the, what it does to our politics is it removes that basic human element and leaves most human beings as sociopaths. Therefore, you get a sociopathic president. Now, you bring up two uh, elements of social media um, that I can see very little positive in. The first, you say you work in education. Um, what is the primary use of social media in our high schools today? Bullying, cyberbullying. It's the single biggest problem in our society today. We have children committing suicide because people will not leave them alone on social media. People you used to be able to ignore by going around different hallways can now track you down on any number of mediums and gaslight you into just an abyss of self-hatred. Now, the other one you bring up <clears throat> is particularly frustrating for me because I'm an attorney. Hmm. Yeah, people, people will go to social media looking for information about subjects from experts, but they pick the wrong experts. You know who most people tag when they want an answer to a legal question? A cop. You know who knows the least about hmm. our laws in this country right now? cops, and I'm sorry, police officers, you're not lawyers, and you think a lot, a lot of wrong things about the law, you tell people a lot of wrong things about the law, sometimes it gets them in very serious trouble. And when I was in the private sector, I made money getting them out of that trouble, but it was still a pain. 
now that I'm fully employed, uh, I try to spend my time correcting some of the misconceptions that people have. Usually it gets me called a, uh, a cop hating liberal or some such thing instead of, you know, respecting the fact that I have a degree in this stuff. Right. So, so what you see as positives, I can't even fathom where you're coming from. Like tell you more, I could give you a little feedback on what you said. Well, now um, we're in uh, free for all mode. So, all right. So yeah, let me, let me give you a couple of responses and give you a chance to reply. Um, a lot of what you're talking about are definitely serious problems that we see on the internet. Um, problems that have existed in high schools and, uh, and even before that for, for centuries, really, you know, there's human nature, uh, and the bullying that you talked about, um, is, you know, has always been around. Uh, it definitely is a problem in terms of individuals able to kind of find people and give them a hard time. Uh, but conversely, you can also very easily make a point of finding that bully and exposing what they've done as well. They do this publicly and it allows us to be able to find them and make sure that others know that this is a bad actor. This is not a good person. And that effectively is a way for us to more efficiently police what's going on versus something that's happening in some small town in Idaho uh, that I'm not aware of. Now with the internet, when that happens, there's a viral video about it and everyone knows about it. I don't think Ferguson uh, would have gotten the attention that it got uh, to the police corruption that you referred to uh, without it. What do you think of that? Yeah, it gets attention. What kind of attention does it get? From what the federal it, government. Yeah, and what have they done? Nothing. And what are they going to do now under Trump? Nothing. I think, what was well, the under Trump, no, but they got, they got a lot done. I mean, majority. What was the vast majority of the public reaction to Ferguson? These black oh, people didn't go get jobs and get off welfare. It was horrible people were empowered by social media in particular. What you're talking about are advantages of the internet. We heard about Ferguson from legitimate media outlets, where Ferguson turned into a gaslighting situation was social media, was where the psychopaths of the alt-right got hold of it and st immediately jumped in to defend the killing of a young man. Yeah. That's been, that's been what happens in every single situation like that. Sure, but and they, the converse is true, that we were all aware of it. I mean, people on the liberal side, you know, people on the left who were concerned about civil rights or even libertarians that saw police overreach um, were able to, to activate. I mean, there was tons of, I mean, I'm, I'm, I got a lot of lefty friends and I, I've seen how we reacted to it and it could not continue to, con co to happen as easily as it did. The mainstream media, yeah, maybe it would have been uh, watched, but if all you're watching is Fox News, yeah, you're going to get the gaslighting. You're going to get all of the, you know, those elements. Um, but if you are able to talk to another human being, if you're able to talk to a specific person in Ferguson and see an actual video that they're sharing on Facebook and it's getting sent around to all of your friends, that makes it uh, populist. And I understand, I mean, the Trump example is a good one. Uh, you can have populism, which has a dark side. Although, oh, looks like we lost you there. I hope you come back. Um, I can still see you. Ah, okay, I can hear you. So I'm just going to keep going um, yeah, for just a minute, and then I'll let you. Just you don't need your face to talk. Um, but yeah, so so you can talk about the nature of humans and how we use the internet. Uh, but in terms of understanding what the benefits are, I think we would not have the ability to effectively monitor and police bad behavior without the advantages of having my peers communicate or even people that I don't even know who end up becoming my peers to share with me what's going on in their side of the world. And this is international. This list, I can, I know what's going on in Yemen because of what's happening in social media, stuff that would normally be filtered by mainstream media. So there's a great advantage there for us to be able to, uh, you know, police what's going on ourselves. Yeah. But you see every single point you just made is about the internet in general. Whereas we're talking about social media specifically. Everything well, I'm talking about Facebook. I mean, that stuff appears on Facebook. That's, a, that's all. Everything you're right? saying applied to the internet from 1990 until 2006, when the social media revolution really started. I was in college from 2003 to 2007, and we were fully aware of these alternative uh, sources where you could get all this uh, positive information and uh, stay informed about the world without having to rely on traditional media, um, where you could access global media. You, know, you, you could get 
the uh, BBC, you could get Al Jazeera. And, but social media was not as big a thing during that time. So you <laughs> took the information that you gathered from the internet, but then you had to discuss it face to face with right. human beings and you would end up coming to reasonable conclusions. What happens now is that that media that we otherwise wouldn't have access to because of the internet, now it gets crowdsourced to a group of people who are too ignorant to process it, who actually suppress it further. And by the way, you discussed at length legitimate news. Social media has brought us the advent fake news, actual news that is simply made up to get people to click on it. That is a creation of social media and specifically um, the, the social media use of the supporters of Donald Trump. And I'm not just saying that as anti-Trump. When they interviewed the, uh, the village full of Macedonian teenagers who had set up hundreds of these mm. websites. They said right. they tried it with Bernie Sanders, they tried it with Hillary Clinton, they tried it with other Republican contenders, and the response that they received from Trump supporters was so overwhelming that it wasn't even worth targeting any other candidate's uh, supporters. Those are the people who are empowered by social media. Everything else that you were saying uh, applies to the internet in general without ever getting into social media. Well, it's I know. I think I'm talking more about social media in general because, you know, I mean, I was, I helped make the internet. I was working in the 90s, you know, doing the dot-com thing. And I remember before we really had that level of collaborative filtering that allowed us to actually do that kind of per the person kind of discussion uh, right there online. That wasn't, that didn't exist until, you know, MySpace and Facebook. And, you know, people could chat separately, obviously, but there's something about having that all sort of um, managed by being able to sort of see what you want to see. Um, and I think that when you have that, you can have yourself in a room, like, let's say you can have a lawyer room and they're all lawyers there and they're all smart. Or you can have online therapy so that I can go to a place where I know these are, these are you know, sociology people, these are psychology people, and I can actually get expert advice. So you can give me all sorts of negative examples about people that are ill-informed, um, but that's really more of a product of, you know, the diversity of, of who we are. Um, and I think when you talk about the Macedonians and you talk about all the fake news and stuff that happens uh, on the right, obviously you see plenty of that on the left. You know, there's 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 a ton of misinformation that's going on right now that, you know, it's very difficult for me to sort of work my way through. Uh, and I, so I think a lot of that has to do with business interests. And clearly the, the advent of social media is a business program. Um, and I think that if we were going to make this work correctly, we would want to put in certain factors so that the Macedonians can't profit. Um, so that the ads don't work. And you're seeing that. You're seeing a large number of people that are, for instance, uh, boycotting uh, Breitbart. Uh, Google is working on systems to uh, change their ad revenue so that AdWords uh, will, will just fail. They won't get paid if, uh, if they're doing fake news. Uh, oh, welcome back. You're, you're back in the picture. Um, so, you know, I, I, I get where you're talking about how these things can be misused. Obviously, a, a hammer can be misused. A gun can be misused. So it's more about the power of the internet and the power of when you take that and you make it social. It, it, I mean, eventually will be a singularity, right? I mean, I, don't, I didn't have 600 friends before the internet. I have 600 friends and I can find any one of them is going to be an expert on something I need to know about. Um, I'll give you the last minute. Yeah, well, before this election, I had about 1,300 friends on Facebook, and I've had to get rid of about 100 of them because that's a proportion of them that turned out to be openly horrible human beings empowered by the president. Isn't that great? So you got rid of those people. What I, want to, what I want to close on, though, the debate is about is does social media have a negative net impact? We could have all of the benefits you just described without any sort of social media. and but even assuming that social media feeds into the benefits that you're discussing. It's about net impact. And none of the benefits you appointed to can overcome the fact that social media is specifically responsible for the fact that a horribly unqualified person currently has access to the United States nuclear codes. That's enough three to win right there. <laughs>
All right. Um, same thing. You want to do five and five? Yep. I'll, um, I'll start on the negatives. Um, I'll try not to repeat a lot of the things you said. Um, I think it's important to understand that uh, the physiological uh, changes that come from social media and what it does to us, uh, to our health. Um, I think a lot of that is universal, whether you're doing good things on the internet or bad things, um, you are going to suffer health effects. I think that's important to consider. Um, there's a certain addiction that comes with those little red bubbles. Uh, every time you kind of get a like, you get a little bit of stimulation uh, and it becomes a kind of addiction. Uh, and I think that's important to consider. Uh, you know, the average person um, will spend more time on their phone, on social media, than they sleep now, which is huge. I mean, it's like there's so much time that we spend connected. And I do think that that kind of affects a lot of various elements of who we are. Uh, it affects our relationships. Um, it affects how we um, are able to connect with uh, the people that we love. Uh, and sometimes it makes us disconnected from the people we love. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but you know, I, I can think of times where I'm hanging out with my girlfriend and we're both on our phones, you know, and we're not really talking to each other. And I think that's, that's, uh, that wouldn't be happening. You know, uh, we can talk about a little bit about, you know, the kind of obsessions and addictions that people have with, uh, with just a potpourri of possibilities. Um, whatever you might be into, uh, you can find that information available uh, and you can find people to talk to about that. And I think that, you know, that kind of becomes, you know, a, a large, a big issue because you can get people that are radicalized, um, either uh, people that are shooting up a school because they're a red pillar, you know, somebody who, you know, like, the, you know, Rogers in Isla Vista, who shot up all those people, he sort of was bred by uh, the little pockets of the internet where people were very angry uh, and were looking for a target. So I think that, and of course, Islamic terrorism is, is also, you know, driven by that. Uh, and like you said, the Trump election, uh, a lot of that happened kind of in secret. They were, they intentionally kind of kept their alt-right, like little secret groups planning on it. Uh, and not really telling anyone what was going on so that we could be surprised. And we were, we were, we were surprised. Um, and it's interesting to see that because obviously that, that kind of thing might've happened uh, in other cases, but it's definitely exacerbated uh, by what we see um, today. Um, and of course, the other part you want to talk about is, is trolling. Uh, people tend to have another personality. People become someone else when you can't see their face, you don't know where they live, you don't know any of their friends, it makes it easier for you to sort of anonymously sort of find a place uh, where you can really uh, attack people and bully them. And that is definitely problematic. And I think that can happen on either side, left or right. I don't think it's partisan. Um, I think that there is a quality in which people can, can be that way. And um, I think that's very important to consider. Um, and also you gotta think about kids, you know, uh, you know it's kind of like the television issue. You know, kids are watching all this television and it made it so that they weren't able to socialize. I think you're, you're more likely, of course, to have um, people that become introverted uh, and focused on their own interests and less empathetic to the rest of the world. And I think that's largely uh, a concern. Uh, they, they find their little niche group and it makes us more and more divided. Uh, instead of one like larger kind of unified town, uh, we end up with a lot of people in little pockets. Um, and that makes it harder for us to sort of um, kind of interbreed, uh, ideologically speaking, uh, which I think becomes a problem. So um, I think I'll leave it at that. I think that's a good, you know, kind of start for me, and I'll pass it over to you. All right. Well, first, uh, since I'm the one with the burden of proof this time, let's uh, be sure to define the inquiry. Um, I am despite what the video says below, we've kind of flipped this around and I am now disagreeing with the prospect that social media has a negative net impact on humans. Now that doesn't mean that I have to prove that it has a positive impact on humans. It just means I have to prove that it has no worse than a neutral impact on humans. So you brought up a lot of negatives. The question is, uh, do those really outweigh the positives? Now, you talk a lot about the uh, human element of communication, the the face-to-face -face element. 
In fact, that can be a huge hindrance for open and honest communication. Um, first of all, we're all controlled by our prejudices. Um, it's the good old boy mentality. I know this boy from high school, and therefore, I don't want to say nothing to upset him in public. You take that away, and suddenly you find that there's a lot more uh, diversity of thought in uh, small towns like mine than you would have thought, and more of a willingness to engage because you don't have that discomfort. Now, speaking of discomfort, a problem that's very personal to me is um, since I was a child, I've suffered sometimes crippling social anxiety. Um, it's very difficult for me to interact with people uh, in person, uh, to open up to people in an, an intimate way. I feel exposed. Um, for a while there, I, I could barely leave my apartment when I was in school without, you know, just being in a, a haze. Social media removes that element. I can express myself to the people that I choose to in whatever manner I choose to and get honest feedback. I've gotten to know people that I thought uh, hated my guts for my entire life just because I was so awkward that they didn't know how to approach me. Um, I have shared experiences of uh, parenthood, of uh, job trials and tribulations with uh, people who ran in completely different circles from me in high school. And we saw each other every day, but we never communicated. Now we're communicating and it's extremely healthy. Um, finally, uh, the other thing that social media removes on that point is uh, loyalties and disloyalties. Uh, you say people can segregate themselves on the internet, but if they do, they have to work pretty hard to do it. Um, it it's very easy to be connected to a lot of diverse people online if you choose to do so. And I think more people choose to do that than choose to segregate themselves into the, the little subreddits of the world. Um, another huge barrier to communication, and I feel this very strongly, is geography. Um, I went to law school at the University of Virginia. Now I live uh, in Northeast Tennessee. My best friend lives in Washington, D.C. Um, I have other good friends who live in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, New York, California, uh, Washington State, uh, Minnesota, friends and family. If it weren't for social media, I would have very little interaction with those people. Instead, I'm able to maintain these uh, deep, intimate connections via this, this zero-cost, uh, small-time commitment medium where we can all kind of interconnect on our own schedules. It's, all, it's also been good for keeping up with family. You know, people in my generation, a lot of times, we don't have the, the excess income necessary to exchange Christmas cards or share pictures of our kids. That barrier is, of cost is gone now. We can share what's going on in our lives and, and how our children are growing with our entire families with a click. Uh, my wife, her grandmother, uh, had eight children, and, and my wife has a total of 250-something cousins at this point. I think I'm number 187 or something like that. Uh, and the vast majority of them are on social media, and they know what's going on with each other's kids. And towards the end of, uh, towards the end of Grandma Buddha's life, that was a huge thing for her because every night she could go through her friends list and pray individually for all of her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. Social media made that happen. The, the loudest users of social media are negative users because loud people tend to be negative. But the vast majority of users are either positive users or passive users. How many people are on your friends list that never like or comment on anything that you say, but then you see them in person and they say, oh, that was really interesting, or oh, I was so glad to hear about X, uh, just because they're not giving you those likes that supposedly drive adrenaline, you're still connecting. All of these are, are strong positives that even in the face of what happened in this past election, I think uh, illustrate that the net value of social media is at worst uh, neutral 
and more li and likely more positive than negative. Well, I have some responses to that. Um, if I can just kind of on, on some of the things you mentioned. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is like health, right? I mean, if you're able to stay inside and you can just sort of keep things comfortable, you might never leave your comfort zone. You could just completely stay in a state where you don't really get out there. You don't, you don't get out um, physically and you know, that, that can be an issue. Um, I think when we're talking about um, the diversity of people out there, um, you know, it also does allow us to find really negative elements. I mean, there are people that are committing crimes on the internet, people that are using your social media accounts to, to shame you. Um, there are ways in which people are stealing uh, stuff and using them uh, again for their own purposes. And it turns into this sort of money game where everyone's trying to find kind of gain uh, some, some way to make money off of it. That is how Facebook works. Facebook takes everything we do and it monetizes it and it sells it and it gives that to companies so that they can make money and then they can advertise and then it gets us all buying more. It gets us all taking in as much as we can. It's manufacturing need so that we're buying more and more and more stuff. We're able to get exactly the perfect thing that I really always wanted. And instead of just never buying it, I buy it. Now you might look at it as, oh, everyone's going to be able to get all their stuff, but then you have hoarders where they just have to have the latest and greatest thing, which is ultimately destroying this planet. So I think there's issues with the way that it affects our health and the way that it affects the health of the planet if this goes unfettered. So I think that's a, that's a key point. And I wanted to say one more thing, and I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Um, when it comes to family, I think there is a way in which we are able to connect with our family, but there's also, um, you know, for me, you, you had a personal note and I think I'll, I'll add my own. I haven't talked to my sister in three years and it's all because she messaged me on Facebook and she said, I, can you not put anything political on your, your Facebook wall? Because I don't want to look at it. I don't, I don't like it. Uh, and I said, no, this is free expression. I'm going to, you know, I want to use this as my sounding board. Uh, and so uh, she doesn't even answer my phone calls. We have no connection just because of that. So as much as it can bring us all together, it can also tear us apart. Like you said, you lost half your friends uh, because of this. Not so, <laughs> Nowhere near half. Maybe they, really, maybe they weren't really your friends, but, you know, maybe they could have been. Maybe if you were able to connect with them in a way um, that was with your whole person and not like this sort of filtered version of, of who we are. You know, the person I'm presenting to you now, um, maybe you would have had, they would have saw you as a real person. Well, let me work backwards from your personal experience. What you could have done with your sister was put her on your family list and removed her from your list of people that see your political post. I've done yeah. that a lot of my, with a lot of my family. Because uh, they're not comfortable with it, I have done it with a lot of the the uh, kids under eighteen that are friends with me at church that I want to connect with because they babysit my kids, or I'm doing a class with them or something like that. But their parents have expressed to me they don't want them to see the political stuff. Or sometimes I get into very socially charged sure. things that are not appropriate for young eyes. So social media gives us the power to segregate those things from people who are somehow bothered by them or don't want to hear them. Um, it, your unwillingness to do so is yours, but it's not, well, it's, not a, it's, it's, not, it's not caused by social media. Yeah. I mean, even her, I mean, it's partly her as well, but it, it yeah. is, I think, I think it, it, it's the, it's just having her see it at all at any point has soured her in some way. And it's, it's odd because I think it's monolithic. I think what we see is that we see an element of something, uh, and there's a kind of identity politic that happens and they see that I have exhibited some quality of something which is a larger problem and then I get that attributed to me. So on the left, you know, <clears throat> I'd be some libtard and on the right, I'd be a Nazi, right? So there, there does tend to be this ease of hasty generalizations, um, you know, uh, taking us back to the Ferguson example. It's, it's a bad thing when people are only seeing the worst of the world and the worst of us. And you have to, to ask, you know, the number, the actual number of people who are like that. First of all, there's more fake accounts out there than people really understand. Um, yeah, people that are that's just a problem. Making stuff up to, to troll right. people. Or, Multiple personalities. Or who are actually, you know, Donald Trump himself has retweeted accounts that didn't exist other than to tweet the thing he retweeted. 
That's you're kind of helping me out here, man. You're helping me out on my side here. But no, I'm saying those are isolated examples and they're done deliberately. And like most wrong things that are done deliberately, they are the very small minority of usage. Now, you talk about health effects. Um, I have most certainly found that the ability to express myself more openly on social media makes it much easier for me to get out of the house and do other things. You know, I, I ran for political office in 2012. Uh, I, bef before that, before uh, social media had become a, a large part of my life, uh, it was hard for me to make eye contact with people. And here I am knocking on about 6,000 doors, shaking I don't know how many hands. Um, and people, because I was able to get certain things out and have deep personal connections via social media, I was able to make that shallower connection with a lot more people. And I actually came within about six and a half points of unseating the former speaker of the Tennessee House of Representatives. Me, a guy who, you know, at times had been a shut in uh, in just a couple of years before. Uh, and, and a part of that, in part that I didn't get into, into my, uh, in my initial discussion has to do with personal branding. Social media uh, gives us the ability to project the persona that we want to in the forum that we want to. We've talked about Facebook. We've talked about Twitter. Possibly the most important uh, social media outlet out there right now is LinkedIn, where you can put your resume online with all of your accomplishments and have it available to everybody within your field to view. Uh, I have friends who have gotten tremendous job opportunities from Facebook. Uh, at my work, my boss and I publish articles on Facebook about software and cybersecurity to demonstrate our expertise to our customers. It generates us business. Now, even on the smaller business side, social media has been an absolute boon for small business, especially in smaller areas like mine. Um, I have a friend whose family, I mean, I mean, he was my friend before they opened, but he his family is Vietnamese, they opened the first Vietnamese restaurant in the Tri-Cities uh, late last year. I found them via Yelp, which for those who don't know, is a, uh, a social uh, review site. There are not a ton of people in our area who know Vietnamese cuisine, but the ones who did found them very quickly through social media and their business is booming. They might not have lasted three months without social media. And I, I hear that. I hear the business side. Um, I'd and like to go ahead. Yeah, I can finish that thought. And I can, you know, there are dozens of other examples, especially here locally. It's a way for small businesses that otherwise would have been off the radar in out of the way places like mine to make themselves destination resources for larger populations. And that was not possible for through any traditional means of advertising before social media. Sure. I mean, I think that you would be able to do it in different ways. You'd be able to have a website where you could kind of have a portfolio site and people would be able to know about it. But it's very difficult for me to argue against you on that particular point. I think the places where we start to, you know, it's an ROI thing. You consider what are the bonuses? Obviously, business can be really great and you're able to kind of reach out to people and you're able to kind of get past this, you know, level of confidence that you need. But ultimately, <coughs> When you got out there and you were going door to door and you were talking with people, you were having a legitimate full experience in the real world with these people. You knew all you, you ever run for office. <laughs> I'm working on you do not um, have a full experience with anybody that you meet on the well, campus. It's, it's more full, let's say, than even what we're having now. If you and I were hanging out in the room, I would know how you smell. I would know how you kept your, you know, I would know everything. And I think that um, that's kind of my one of the points that I want to bring to is that the more we can really fully understand the people that we're interacting with, uh, the more thoughtful we can be about our choices. Oftentimes we get filtered versions of people. If you look at Instagram models and you look at the way that people sort of present themselves, or if you look at, uh, you know, OkCupid or Tinder, you know, you've got this constant filtering of who we are into these archetypes of who people want us to be. Um, and it becomes a disingenuine kind of society. And it gets to the point where, and this is where I think we're getting the serious net losses, is that we become dehumanized. We become the shadow of whatever the other person thinks they are. So they're great, we're bad. 
and, and it's and, and that's I think terrifying. It makes it a lot easier to press a button and kill a million people. So I'll end. <laughs>